The science you collect in NS Space 2 will allow you to unlock technologies from the technology circle. Those techs will give you access to system improvements, new planet types to colonize, more resources, and better equipment. With better equipment for your ships, you'll be able to win any number of fights, even if the number is not in your favor. It will also let you get more Fidzi out of your existing system, so you don't have to colonize more systems to get more Fidzi. Let's look at it in more detail. The technology circle can be accessed through the technology screen right there. It is divided in four sections. The military section at the top, the economy and trade section to the right, exploration and science section to the bottom, and the empire development to the left. Each section is split into five stages. First stage has two tech, then you get more techs when you reach the higher stages as well. To unlock the next stage, you need to unlock technology from the previous stage. So for example, to unlock stage two, I would need to unlock one technology. To unlock stage three, I would need to unlock two technologies, as indicated by the little padlocks there. You might have to un unlock four technologies from the previous stage, not any previous stage, but only the previous one, to unlock the following stage. So keep in mind that. Also, just to let you know, I'm playing as the software in this game, so they have something to low that lets them access technologies from the next stage in, in advance of it. So even though it's not unlocked, I could select them, but it's only because I'm playing with the softphones at the moment. So how do you use technology? How do you research technologies? Well, it's pretty simple. You just click on it. As you click on it, you'll have the number showing on top of the research technology, which will be the number, its order in its queue. And then in the queue, you'll see in how many turns the research will be completed. The other thing that you need to know is that for given technology, you might get between one and I think four technologies ready. So for example, if I'm researching planetary landscaping, I'll get two improvements, sustainable farms and intensive cultivation. You can mouse over the actual technology to see the, all the different details and the effects. Or you can just hover over one improvement and have a bit of more description and its cost, its political impact and its upkeep. One thing to note about technologies is that some technology will force you to make a choice. For example here, you've got this little line in the middle between these two texts. And it basically means if you pick one, you can't pick the other. That's very important to know. Also, there are some level of dependencies. Actually, you can look at the, the links here. It basically says what it is. For example, if you research off-world agribusiness, there's a line here that continues to adaptive bureaucracies. It basically means that if you research this one first, the cost of this one will be reduced. The other thing to notice is that there are faction-specific technologies. So, for example, if you see a little icon of your faction at the bottom of the technology, it means that some effects or some technologies or some improvements that you can unlock with that technology are specific to your faction. So, for example, here, this is technology specific to the Sofons Affinity. This is only because, for them, the Mega Indie Consultancy will have plus 10 industry per core planet. One thing as well to keep in mind is that whenever you research a technology, it will increase the cost of all the other technologies. So it's important to keep that in mind because it means that the order in which you're going to research things is important. And also that if you get random technologies via quest, for example, it's not always that great because it will increase the cost of the remaining culture technologies you will research, and that random technology might not be something you're inter interested in. Now let's look at the deeds. Deeds are kind of quests that you'll have to complete, and if you complete them before the other factions, the other factions won't be able to get them. So for example, these deeds, creator of wealth, if you're the first one to produce a hundred dust in a single star system, you'll get 
a reward and the other faction will not be able to get that reward. Some of them are quite interesting. For example, here if you get the if you're the first to get eight technology, you'll get a boost, I think, in science. If you're the first one to build the intergalactic technology center, the other one won't be able to get it, and it's pretty good because it gives you plus ten percent science on a system and minus ten percent cost on technologies. Um, this one will give you a thousand influence, which is not negligible. Um, but basically, yeah, all these deeds are important to pursue. However, I would advise you to look carefully at the different rewards because some rewards are more interesting than others. For example, I won that re that deed here, and I got 75 antimatter, which is pretty cool, especially when you reach on this stage three of the gate. The best way to get science in your empire is through your fizzy production in any system. The best system for science are the cold systems, so snow, tundra planets will give you a very good raw production of science. And then you have a lot of population that multiplies it quite a lot. And for example here I'm producing almost 200 science on this planet on its own. If you add a lot of system improvements, like public-private partnerships at the beginning of the game, this is great. Magnetic field generators, the ITER, or even the F-Reality Institute, you're gonna get an extremely good output of science. For example, in one system here, I'm just making 2,000 science per turn. That's one way of getting a lot of science. Another way of booting you, boosting your entire science production is through lows. There are a few lows that boost your science production at the expense of something else. For example, the Cram Exam Act will give you more science per population at the expense of happiness per population. There is also the Reigns of a Box, which gave you more science at the expense of dust. Always keep that in mind, but if you actually want to achieve a science victory, it might be interesting to have a little bit less dust production for more science. I would like to talk a little bit more about some key technologies you can find and you should research in your technology circle. We're going to start by economy and trade. But first of all, remember that a lot of these depend on your strategy. If in the long term you don't plan to, for example, get a lot of dust but a lot of science, there will be technologies that you will not pick. However, I'm just going to try to show you the key ones that I think probably whatever technology you or strategy you're going to apply to your game, you will need them. In the economy trade, on the first stage, the Xenolinguistic is a must-have because the boost of industry that it gets you at the beginning of the game is great. Also, if you have strategic deposits in your systems or titanium and hyperium, you will need these two technologies. This other Industry production system improvement is good, but not as good as the first one. So if you have to research one of the two, I would always go for Xeno Industrial Infrastructure. In the tier 2, there are two key technologies, Galactic Commodities, which let you access the marketplace to buy out and sell luxury and strategic resources, and the Multi-Thread Management, which will unlock you the buyout technology. So for that, you can use your dust to buy out for example, system improvements and ships in your systems. In the tier 3, you've got another marketplace technology that, that is good to have. This one for mercenaries and heroes. Probably less important than the luxuries and strategic goals. It's very important also to get tier 2 exploitation technology for adamantium and antimatter. And you might want to be interested by the trade company HQ and subsidiary if you build large, if you plan to have a lot of alliance and if you want to get a boost of dust and science as well. I think also don't forget, for example, the slag and sludge center if you have strategic resources and you want to get more of them. The tier 4 is very dependent on what's your game plan, but the key ones always reach Alkic's refinery and Quadrinix recapture, so exploitation of tier 3 resources. Microwave pipes is quite good for everything, but you know, it's not specifically the best. 
The other thing that I find quite interesting, I think, is the troops, health and troops damage, because plus 30% on health and damage on your troops is a very big boost. So it's quite key, and remember that if you go into a militaristic path. In the last stage, stage 5, there are always one technology that you'll need to research if you want to have a science victory, it's always really good. The rest, it really depends. I would just highlight one, which is, I think, this one, the Mexu Quarter, Quarter, which gives you plus two resource generation on strategics and one on luxury. So it's great to boost your production of, basically, resources. In the Science and Exploration Quarter of the Tech Tree, a lot of your choice will depend on the types of planets that are available for you to colonize. So this is definitely a main driver of your choice. However, I would suggest to always pick Xenobiology because of the raw science input it gives you. It will more than double your original science production at the beginning of the game. In the second stage, you might want to pick the Baryonic Shielding for the extra movement in Warp Drive, the Advanced Scanner for more exploration, and if you have some strategic resources, I would advise also looking at Chin bacteria for the improved probes, which we talked about in previous episode. In the third stage, you also want to look at the different type of planets you can colonize. You will want to unlock endless secrets to make more exploration. You might want to re reveal and enable the use of wormholes to add technology as well. In stage four, you will want to unlock maybe ultra IR astronomy or discovery of more planets, potentially the deep epoch scanning for expediting on curiosities of level 4, and the deep space fuel scoop if you have to use warp move, warps, so outside star lanes, to for example go to your enemy and fight them. In the latest stage you will always want to look at the genius of the endless improvement to get basically a science victory and also the OCP investigation unit to nullify the effect of negative anomalies. This is if you want to make your existing systems better and remove their negative effects from anomaly. In the Empire development quarter of the tech tree, you will want to look at food technologies, influence production technologies, and more importantly, the ship unlocking. So first of all, stage one, you want to unlock planetary landscaping because it will give you a basic, very good raw food production. You will want to look at the technologies that unlock diplomacy, so for example this one will unlock diplomacy with minor civilization, this one will unlock the ability to have alliance and exchange resources and technologies and sign science agreements with other major factions, and this will allow you to have even more cooperation with them and get some more boost. You will want to look at the overcolonization technologies because these will give you basically more room to expand before triggering empire expansion disapproval on empire. So you can keep your approval very high even though you colonize more than you can you should be able to. Finally you will want to unlock the different type of sh of um, ship. So you've got the small ones here with efficient shielding, then you've got the two medium one, the defensive one and the offensive one here. The defensive one is there and the large carrier over there. These are very important and you will want to unlock them. Linked to them are technologies that give more module slots for your different ships. So all of these cost strategic resources, but they are very important to get. So I would really much advise you to unlock them if you have the strategic resources needed to, you know, use these additional module slots. Finally, we're going to look at the military side of the technology circle. In the first tier, you will probably would like to unlock N-Wave Fusion because it gives you a chain gang program, which is an easy way, though costly, way of getting manpower in your empire. So you, for every population, you basically sacrifice one population to gain some man manpower. In the second stage of the tech tree, you will probably would like to unlock the autonomous construction so that you can get extra common point and the ability to have armored units for grand battles. In the third level, in the third stage, you will of course want more 
Command point, command point are very important because it lets you have larger armies. And then depending on the strategics you have, you will want to pick one of these four technologies here. If you have to pick one and you've, you have plenty of titanium and hyperium, I would suggest to go for the hyperium magnetics because energy weapons are a little bit better and more efficient at the moment in the game. In terms of defense, it's always good to have a bit of both. This technology is quite interesting as well because it will unlock the fighters and the bombers, which are module used by the carrier. Stage 4, again, you will want to unlock this, Universal Aerodynamics for extra command points, and unlocking air units for ground battles, this is always very important. The same way goes for your strategic resources and weapons here, so always go for the energy ones. That will be valid for the last stage of this tech quarter as well. Maybe one extra thing to notice is that when you reach the last stage of the military tech quarter, this is a very good one, the redundant cybernetics. Also because you get extra common points on the same technology. Another interesting one is the core cracker, which is a special module that lets you destroy planets. Quite interesting, I would say. So I leave you on that note, and I hope you enjoyed that guide, and I'll see you soon for a next episode of The Beginner's Guide. Goodbye.